Hello, Tony here from Lightwave Digital. Today what we're going to be looking at is how to create basic liquid in Lightwave 3D using uh, particles. So this is a basic tutorial and using hypervoxels and we'll see what we can come up with. What I'll do is I will give you this final scene and a start scene which I'm going to start with uh, when I show you uh, the final outcome. And this is just a VPR render uh, of the kind of final outcome. And it's a low, obviously you can see it's a low res kind of one. But it shows you what the final outcome is going to come with. And I'll give you that scene as well. So let's uh, clear the scene. And what I'm going to do is load a uh, start here scene, which is literally just this. And then what we're going to do is I'm going to go through how to add the emitter, the settings I've used, same with the collision, uh, and then show you how to use hypervoxels to also texture it in a certain way that you get that outcome that I've shown you uh, from before. So, so to to start, let's add, a, add an emitter. So item tab. Dynamic object, particles, which will bring up this. Let's give it a name, call it liquid, and we'll leave it on the hypervoxels one. And then what we need to do is change these settings. So for the birth rate, let's put in 200. Uh, we're going to say it by frame, so it's going to be 200 particles per frame. Uh, we'll switch the nozzle to box no change and then the size for the size let's well let me just move it into place for the time being so i'm roughly putting it above here look so it can come down and flow so let's put this at 0 0.5 0 0.5 and we'll leave that at one and then we'll put three zeros at the end of the particle limit so we don't run out I don't want it to start at a certain point, uh, so it's just going to start straight away. Uh, from If I just jump to my camera settings, let's just turn off adaptive sampling to speed things up. To, so I'm just using one. And then let's jump into uh, our other settings here. Look, So let's, uh, so I've dropped these down to three. Uh, let's drop this, all these to three as well. We're on faster and uh, we ain't got we have f disabled G, uh, gi for because i don't really want it on uh you could also maybe go in and i've already done this i've just knocked the lights down to two i don't i don't need we don't need them for this like i said i just need for draft in the little top corner here the little cog let's put it on draft mode and half resolution as well so when we it'll speed it up for us but anyway back to uh, the emitter so if you ever do click off it just make sure you're on it properties effects double click to bring it back up okay so we've filled in this part let's go to the next bit for for the actual way i'm going to make it like five because i want it to be heavier so it's kind of coming down uh, because on the ground i'm going to give the ground some f uh, like frictions but i also to to, to kind of Stop the flow of water very slightly because in real world you would have that uh, i definitely don't want it to live and die i just want it to uh, kind of keep going and so on and so forth and then what we'll do is uh, decide on uh, the next kind of bit for the tab so what we want to do is let's go and put in uh try two meters here so basically i've put two meters in the x so it's coming out like so but what i'm going to do uh, is let's put an explosion of one vibration of one so and then for the for the next tab we'll put the earth's gravity of minus 9.8 which which will mean now it will pull it down so a reason i've gone through the x is so it's pushing it forward and then down like so so it, it, it's literally that's okay for the time being. I think we can we can always change it. You can play around with the the position blur, the parent blur, and kind of increase 
how it kind of blends together a little bit for the motion. Uh, again, that's up to you. Uh, we'll leave that like that. For interaction, I'm going to turn it off just because it'll make it quicker. Once I've calculated it all, we can save this out as well, so it means we don't have to recalculate, but for the time being, we'll say that maybe we're happy with that. Okay, what I can do is also I'm going to extend my timeline to 300, but we'll do that uh, down the line a little bit for it. Okay, so we need to add the collision to the, the ground. So we'll select the ground and making sure we're on it, obviously. Under the effects, let's click the add effects and go to collision. Double click the collision. So I've got a sub patch. So for the type, it's sub patch. So make sure you go on sub patch. We'll leave it on bounce. The radius level, so that's basically zeros means it's directly on it. I'm just going to put 50 mil. So it's just kind of floating on top of the surface, but you won't you won't see it like that at all. Let's put a bounce level of say 250. Way too much. Uh, we'll also, let's say, put in quite low section. Let's put some low level fi fiction. So 5, maybe 10, and then 20 for roughness. Uh, everything else will leave the same. So at this stage, why it's on frame 1, let's just calculate it and see what happens. So you can see here, and I'm only calculating uh, four seconds, so it's 30 frames a second. The final one will be 10. So you can see it looks like it's working. We're not getting many particles that's dropping through or flip spitting over the side or anything like that. You've just got to wait, depending on the speed of your computer, how fast this works. But like I said, we'll, we'll save the motion out. So once we've got the motion, we can save that out so we don't recalculate it, and then we can just texture it how we want. So just wait in these last few frames. Okay. So. Let's check it in real time. And that don't look bad, actually. Using the settings I actually uh, did have, and it's just going over. But like I said, we're going to extend it so basically that's okay i'm kind of happy with that so let's just stop it obviously if we go uh onto vpr you're not going to see out because we need to texture these polygons so uh, sorry these points so what you need to do is make sure you go onto the render properties volumetrics make sure this is ticked use legacy volumetrics that's what we're going to use Okay, so make sure that's ticked. Okay, then let's go to more options, bring up image processing, legacy volumetrics, and then go to hypervoxels 3.0. Click on the liquid and activate it. So if I just turn it on now, see what we've got. Yeah, it's kind of like a grey mud kind of thing. <laughs> so what I'm going to do as a starting point to get you to the texture I had is while you're on volumetrics, hypervoxels, click on presets and you'll get the hypervoxel presets. Uh, let's go on to generic and we're going to use mercury. Uh, so just add that. Yep. Switch the size down to about 100 mil. The variation let's tell it to have a hundred percent variation now you can tell it also to use the velocity of the way it's actually running which kind of makes sense because that's the kind of way it's going uh, also blending mode let's put some in quite high let's try I don't know let's try 500 for the, for the start of it uh, and as you can see it's kind of it's very shiny so we're gonna have to edit that and, and so on when we get kind of get to it so let's see what, what else we can do to make it look a little bit better let's jump over to the next tab here uh, i'm going to i'm going to shift click both of these off because i don't want them on uh, let's uh reduce this diffuse down to about let's say 10 let's 
up the glossiness to 75 maybe uh, but we'll also let's drop this down to the specularity down to about 60 uh, it's got way too high let's put the the reflection down to about 20 uh, you've got the transparent level as well so maybe mm, let's try I don't know 65 for this let's go over to the maybe the next so you can see it's kind of getting there let's go over to the next kind of tab and uh, let's uh, add a few changes to this so uh, let's try uh, I, I mean I've just like I say I'm just playing around with this go in yourself and see what you kind of come up with let's just try turbulence you know adding it to it you've got the the strength of the turbulence so let's go and add I don't know, let's say I don't know something silly like 500 see what happens like so maybe up the frequency by one let's uh again let's go and have a look at another tab now so if we jump onto the shading and advanced mean let's just change some of the some of the settings in here see what we can come up with i mean you've got adaptive but that's gonna make it quite white and you've got the sharpness of it as well so i mean we'll add we'll add a little bit to this uh I mean, the environment tab, we don't really need to change it, to be fair. I mean, I quite like it the way way it is. And so on. But, yeah, I mean, also what you can do is you can come in. Let's change it to a cool, a bit of cool blue in here. Like so. I mean, I'm going to have to extend this so it kind of carries on as well so at this stage it's just a matter of experimenting with the setting so let's let's put this diffuse up quite a bit because we want it to be more bluer like so that's quite nice and again you just need to play with the settings and see do you know what i mean what works and what doesn't work so i mean that's it's kind of getting there I don't think it's quite as good as the uh, the original the original one that I did, but without opening it and checking the <laughs> checking the actual uh, settings, I can't remember exactly what it was. But again, I'm just going through uh, and playing with stretch these out a bit more so they blend a bit better. I don't know if we need it to be that high for blending, but let's have a look at where we're at so because rather than me babbling on forever let's have a look so again it's kind of getting there let's just undo this let's put it back to zero i'm going to put 300 in here and then let's uh let's recalculate so we're going to recalculate this. so based on how quick your computer is is how long it might take to kind of Okay, so it's took about four or five minutes to to uh, calculate all this out. Let's just press play, have a look. So obviously it's about 10 seconds long. And this is the same simulation I showed you before, but obviously using the settings so you know what to do. It's just a matter of playing around with the hypervoxels. Yeah, so again, let's stop it. Have a look at the camera view. jump along like so and I still could do a tweaking I can't remember exactly the settings I used on the on the final scene which you, but you'll be able to see yourself uh, and save them out and so on and so forth uh, once you've done this if you save it and shut it down and reopen it you probably have to recalculate it again unless you save it out so what I would do is go back to your particle emitters go to file uh, let's call it oops, 
Liquid 2. Uh, let's save all motion selected. Save it where you want to save it and give it a name. And it will save it in there. So when it loads up, like my original one, uh, the end one, if I load it up, it should load up without me having to calculate the actual movement of the particles and the reaction where they are. So that should help you out quite a bit. But again, you can keep coming in here and playing around with the settings and see what happens. This is just, like I said, uh, kind of a kickstart to get you to this stage. Have a look at the scene I'm giving you. Uh, have a go at it, but also have a play around with the final one and see what you can come up with. Uh, and we'll kind of leave it there. So uh, thanks for listening.